Hey guys, who are you? David DeFranco here from GearPop.com as well as DeFrancoGaming.com. Why am I yelling? Because I'm freaking excited about iOS 7. iOS 7, in theory, is kind of like an all new start, at least from a visual standpoint. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot wait to get my hands on this. Now, starting at the beginning, Apple started their iOS 7 portion of the keynote by saying, this is the biggest change since the original iPhone in 2007. 2007, 2013, yeah, it's been quite a while. Now I gotta say, and I'm still gonna back up my original statements, I'm perfectly happy with the iPhone besides some minor things here and there like access to quick settings and whatever. I like the current iOS interface very much. I, I just like it. I mean, I don't know. I think it's great, it works just fine and all that good stuff. But as I've said many times, I am always open to change. I love change. I love adapting to change. It's just, it's just something I welcome with open arms. Not that I hug OSs, but you get the point. All right, getting to the point, speaking of points, let's talk about iOS 7 and what it brings to the market. Now, for this video, I'm gonna break it down into nine features right there that I broke down. I just repeated myself, that I typed up on this list of notes because obviously I just got finished watching the live blog over at Engadget and I've not actually watched the keynote myself. I'm gonna watch it on my Apple TV later tonight. I can't wait. Okay, so let's just get to the features. Number one, control center. This is a quick access portal, I guess you wanna call it that. Two, features like Bluetooth, brightness, um, Wi-Fi, all that stuff. And the fact that you can turn it off with ease, thank you. This has been something I've been wanting for a while now and it's actually something I quite enjoy on Android. So I'm finally glad to see that Apple's coming through with this. Feature number two, and that is true multitasking support. Now if you look at this, if we tap that, what happens? Yes, that comes up on the bottom. And you can swipe between your apps, you can tap the app, switch it, blah, 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 blah. It's all good stuff, right? Yes, I mean, if this was invented a couple years ago, which it was, but nowadays with things like Android, and I'm not gonna lie, Android has awesome multitasking, it's time for Apple to finally kick it up a notch and just put out something better. And thankfully, they finally are. Anyway, getting into specifics about the visual interface, it's gonna be like WebOS. Basically, we'll have card apps, and you should be able to see like a live preview of whatever apps you're scrolling through. So I really can't wait to see that myself. Feature three, and that is a brand new Safari. We now have vertical tabs. Also, I should say, we have no limits on tabs. So this means you're no longer um, actually restricted to eight tabs, which is pretty cool. And yes, I have found myself using more than eight tabs. Sometimes I just want to save information and not replace it with a new tab. But thankfully, we can finally do that with the brand new Safari in iOS 7. We also have a smart search field where I guess it predicts your text. I'm not totally sure. Again, I have to watch the keynote myself. And we do have iCloud keychain support. So again, going from your Mac to the iPhone to the iPad, iPod Touch, it's gonna to be one seamless experience with your passwords. Feature number four, take this with a grain of salt because I have not seen this myself. This is just stuff I read online. Apparently the brand new camera has integrated filters. So think Instagram, but it's now built into the camera app. If you ask me, that's pretty cool. I know not everyone is into filters. You're not forced to use them. So calm down, you roll up an arm, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to use them. That sounded bad of me. I should really tone it down. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. Filters, I think are a welcome touch. I mean, it's not always good for pro photography, but sometimes it can actually look pretty good. At least in terms of Instagram, I'm a huge Instagram user. Instagram.com slash David Franco. My link is right below if you wanna follow me. Just throwing that out there. And also included as a brand new photos app, which I think allows you to better organize your photos instead of having to scroll through an endless, uh, well, list of photos. I believe the new photos app does the job for you. Take that with a grain of salt because I haven't seen it myself. But from what I've heard and from what I've seen in terms of screenshots, not actual video, it looks to be pretty nice. Turn on my Bluetooth. I'd like to, Sir Squid Boy, but I cannot. My apologies. I really hope you could hear that. If you could, Siri said, well, in response to my turn on my Bluetooth command, she said, I'd like to, Sir Squid Boy. That's my nickname. But I cannot. My apologies. You know what, Siri, that's okay because apparently you will be getting an upgrade. You'll be getting a nice freaking upgrade in iOS 7 come this fall because you can now do settings command. So if I wanna say turn on Bluetooth, 
turn on Wi-Fi, or any of that good stuff, Siri can finally do that. This is something I've been wanting for a long time now, and I'm gonna repeat myself, but I'm so glad that Apple is finally coming through with it. Number six is auto app updates. Now, Android users are always bragging about this, but I gotta be honest, I'm not a big fan of auto app updates, whether it's on the iPhone, or Android, or Blackberry, or Windows Phone. I'm just not a big fan of auto app updates. I've never have been, never will be probably. I just like knowing when I'm updating my apps, especially if an update comes out and it crashes the app, and that's happened many times on iOS, Android, and whatever else you use. But the good news is, there will most likely be an option to turn this off. However, I know this is a feature that I've been wanting, um, that I've been wanting, that I know a lot of people have been wanting, so it's obviously welcome for those people, but for me personally, auto app updates, eh. And now let's talk about feature number seven of iOS 7, and that is iTunes Radio. Yes, this is the long rumored iRadio, also known as the Pandora Killer, from Apple. Now think like Pandora 1, but in terms of, well, Apple and their, I'm sure, beautiful iTunes music interface. It's gonna be just like Pandora 1, but get this even cheaper. I love Pandora 1, guys. I use it every single day. Seriously, every single day. It's just one of those things. I love Pandora 1 that much. And I pay $37 a year for that. But iTunes Radio will be part of iTunes Match, a yearly subscription service, which I'm not currently a part of, but it's only $25 a year. So will I switch to iTunes Radio, especially because it's cheaper? Most likely, yes. I say most likely because I don't know how it's going to perform in terms of predicting my music tastes, but I'm really hoping Apple at least lets us get like maybe like a 14 day or 30 day trial. But still, the option is there, and I'm glad that Apple's finally come through with their iRadio service. Feature number eight, this is not huge with me, but this could be huge with people in general, and it is called Activation Lock. Now, apparently, it's a feature that prevents thieves from reactivating stolen iOS devices. So say, God forbid, your iPhone is stolen, your iPad is stolen, or whatever, that thief cannot reactivate that device and use it themselves or resell it. So if you ask me, that's pretty smart on Apple's part. Kudos. Do people say kudos anymore? I like saying kudos. Last but certainly not least, and that is feature number nine of iOS 7, and that's the fact that you can finally block messages, and I believe phone numbers, I don't see why not, on FaceTime and within the Messages app. Now this is funny because I actually had a friend text me a couple weeks ago saying, how do you block a number on the iPhone? And I said, I don't think you can. You actually have to call up your, you know, your phone provider, your service provider, you know, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, whatever, T-Mobile, um, and ask them to block the number. But what's really cool is, I believe that feature is already built into Android. So if you ask me, that's sweet. Now, unfortunately, it's not part of iOS until iOS 7. So if this is the same kind of feature that's in Android and it's finally coming to iOS, I'm totally welcome to that. Not that I ever had to really block numbers. I don't have any psycho ex-girlfriends coming after me, at least not as the recording of this video, but at least the feature is there to use in the future. And now to wrap up this video, iOS 7 is available this fall. We don't have an exact release date, but if you want my prediction, I say late October. Maybe October 27th, 26th? I don't know, we can come back to this video at some time and see if I was right or wrong. However, great news for developers, you do get it today. Yes, today you can download it. Now, I did provide my UDID to a viewer of mine and he promised me a, uh, you know, a, a beta installation of iOS 7 on my iPhone. So I might be installing that tonight or tomorrow. I'm not totally sure. Oh, no, 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 you know what? No, no, no. You know, hold on, guys. Let's back up a bit. I'm going to install it on my iPod Touch. I can use that thing as a guinea pig, right? Not a physical guinea pig. Although guinea pigs are cool. The thing is, I don't want to install a beta version of iOS 7 because I know it's going to be extremely buggy, as expected. So I'd rather install it on something I can, you know, risk losing. Not losing, but you know what I mean. Such as the iPod Touch. So if you are watching for the person who uh, took my UDID and they are providing me with iOS 7, thank you very much. I'm really really looking forward to putting it on my iPod Touch and experimenting with it for future videos. And now, where'd that go? 
think it went way back there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I realize I talk a lot. I mean, between just... Just today was madness, guys. Today was madness. I mean, if you were watching my live stream over at ddefranco.com slash live, which I hope you were. We had a pretty good time, I thought. Then you saw that I was trying to balance my time and energy between Microsoft's Xbox One E3 keynote, which looked pretty freaking incredible, as well as Apple's WWDC 2013 keynote. So between those two keynotes, I'm burnt out, I'm tired, and I just can't wait to watch this keynote myself later tonight in my living room. All right, with those personal notes aside, you don't really need to know all that, do you? I don't even need to know all that. I just love to talk. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support, and I'll see you in tomorrow's vlog from this past weekend. It should have been up today, but WWDC was madness, and I wanted to get that out today. So my vlog will definitely be up tomorrow. And in my opinion, it's a good vlog. I actually had a lot of fun. It's like 22 minutes long, so you'll see it then. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.